In this video, we're going to introduce linked lists, specifically singly linked lists. In order to get there, though, what I want to do is take a short detour and look at how arrays are stored in memory. And I think this will help us understand how linked lists work as opposed to arrays. So I've created an array called mant. So I have my mant array, and I've put four values in it, 8, 6, 7, and 5. And then what I've done up here is I've shown memory. Now you can see that it starts at 89, but it starts way over here and it ends way over here. And these are just going to be numbers representing slots in memory. One cell equals one byte in memory. And in order for the mant array to go into memory, what it has to do is say, how big is the information that I'm going to put in? And the type of information is an int, and an int is four bytes, so an int would take up four of these cells. And if I have four ints, it's going to take up 16 of these cells. So what the computer would do is find an open block of 16 bytes and reserve it for our mant array. And that's exactly what we've done. We have 16 slots here, and now this is going to be my mant array. And then in each slot, what we're going to do is we're going to put each number, 8, 6, 7, and finally 5. And if you look at each one, you can see that it takes up four of these slots, which are one byte, and an int takes up four bytes. And you'll also notice that they are contiguous, meaning that they sit right next to each other inside of memory. So an array is easy to figure out what's going to be next inside of the array because you just look at the next slot in memory. And this is going to be important when we contrast it with linked list because 8 is right next to 6 in memory, is right next to 7 in memory, is right next to 5 in memory. And it has a reference, which is the first cell or the first byte inside of memory. So the first one right here is 101. 8 would be referenced as 101. 6 would be referenced as 105. 7, 109, and 5, 113. Now, as we look at linked list, the computer does not need contiguous memory, meaning memory right next to one another, in order to create a linked list. What it's going to do is it's going to create a series of nodes or links. Before we create the link or the node, what we're going to do is look at this linked list right here and see that it is full of integers. Now, integers are not exactly the same as ints. Because integers are objects, they're going to be larger and they're not going to be a size of four cells. But in order to make my point about linked lists versus arrays, I'm going to pretend that they are four in size. So what I've done is I've added the same numbers, 8, 6, 7, 5, and I'm going to put them in memory. And as I said earlier, it does not have to be contiguous memory. It just has to be four blocks inside of memory. So the first one that I'm going to put in is the 8. And you notice it takes up four bytes of memory. The next one I'm going to put in is the 6. It also takes up four bytes of memory, the 7, and finally, the five. Now, you can see that they don't sit next to one another. As in the case of the array, we can't just count five over and be at the next value inside the array. We have to link them together. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a node. And in order to create a node, we're going to have to have where they are in memory. And remember, it's just reference to the first memory slot that's associated with each number. And so what we do is we create these nodes or links in a chain. And then what we're going to do in order to link them is we're going to use this memory reference right here as our guide to the next value in the singly linked list. So what I do here is I say, okay, I have my first value 8. Now, I want to figure out where I need to go next. I want to go to the 6 next, and the 6 is located at 106. So in my node, this entire thing right here, I'm going to have two values. The actual value of the node, or the data inside the node, and then I'm also going to have a reference to the next node. And that memory reference points to this one, so I know how to get to the next value inside of the linked list. This one has the first part of our linked list, and that would be the value inside of the node. Now we need to get to the next value, which is 216 in memory. 
So I add a memory reference pointing to the next node. And then finally, the last node would be pointing to 224 in memory. All nodes are going to have some reference to its next value. But this one, there's a problem because there is no next value. We're not going to make it a problem. We're going to make it a solution. And the solution is to put null here, meaning I have reached the end of the line and there is no node to point to. And as you can see, it is not pointing to the value inside of here. It's pointing to this entire node. And we'll see how that works coming up. In this next slide, what I've done is I've showed you what a linked list would look like without all of the memory and associations with it. It was just going to show you the nodes and how it is connected. So what we have here is we have the start of our linked list, which is going to show the first node. The node has a value and then it has a reference to the next link in the chain or node in the chain all the way to the end in which we get null saying I'm done with my list. And so you can see our definition of a link list is a list of items. We do have a list of items, apple, banana, cherry, date, all of the same type. They're all strings. They're linked together by memory references. They're definitely linked together by memory references. And it's an abstract data type, meaning you could use linked lists with C++, C Sharp, Java. The idea of the data structure linked list is an abstract idea. So summing up a linked list, the first part of a linked list is that you must have a node. And inside of that node, you're going to have data and you're going to have a reference pointing to the next node in the chain. And at the end of the linked list, you're going to have a node that has a value, but more importantly, it has null as its memory reference, meaning you have reached the end of the linked list. So a linked list is a data structure organized to store information of the same type that contains nodes that are linked by memory references.